Welcome back to uh, Generating Functions. In this series, uh, I'm going to be looking at how we can manipulate generating functions, and is usually of of the infinite type. Um, although I, I guess not always, but so like I said in the last video, we have the function one divided by one minus x, and it is pretty easy to show that this is equivalent to the sum 1 plus x plus x squared plus dot 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 plus and, 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 and so on into infinity. It is the infinite sum of a geometric series and well I guess this only holds when when the absolute value of x is less than 1 but for our purposes since we'll, we'll most likely never plug in values of x unless we know sort of we'll get a convergence um, we can sort of just use these functions back and forth and so we we have a way of sort of expressing multiplication and division uh, sort of for free right because here we're multiplying by an infinite polynomial but then here we're dividing by a finite polynomial. So depending on the situation we might want one or the other. And that's sort of the um, I guess the prime idea of manipulations is that we can go back and forth between two expressions depending on our situation. And now I said in in my video on or sort of when I was trying to decide what topic I would do, that generating functions we will often have to pull out some calculus knowledge. Um, and so I will actually do that right here. So we have this f of x is equal to 1 over 1 minus x. And we can let me write straighter f's. We can write the derivative of f and that is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus x squared. And we can also write the derivative of the series because we can do term by term differentiation. Uh, so the derivative of 1 will just get a 0. Derivative of x is 1. Derivative of x squared is 2x. Derivative of x cubed is 3x squared and so on. And we notice that we have this generating function and each coefficient is 1, 2, 3, and so on. So we can say that this this function f prime of x we can say that it generates the sequence 1, 2, 3, and so on. And we can see pretty easily um, by an induction argument that the nth derivative of f is equal to n factorial divided by 1 minus x to the n plus 1 power. Um, and so we know that um, and, and, and we can take we can also take n derivatives of our polynomial here and what we can do is since we're doing term by term differentiation, right? We can uh, write the polynomial as a as, as as a sum, right? That's what we do with power series, and then just take the derivative of whatever our sum and is. And but but each time since we're taking the derivative of a constant and we're sort of getting rid of a term we have to shift the index the lower index of the sum but if you do that what you get is that this the nth derivative of 1 over 1 minus x is equal to the sum as k goes from n to infinity of k times k minus 1 times all the way to k minus n plus 1 times x to the k uh, x to the k minus n. And so 
we can, since n factorial here is just a constant, and it's a constant in terms of our sum variable, we can divide both sides by n factorial. And we can notice that this, this product here, since we're starting at n, this is going from sort of the first, this is actually the first n, uh, or the, the n consecutive integers um, starting at k. And in my video on um, combinations, I proved that this product, right, whatever it was, divided by n factorial was actually equal to, ch uh, to k choose n. And so, putting that together, what we get is, and we have that 1 divided by 1 minus x to the n plus 1 is equal to the sum as k goes from n to infinity of k choose n times x to the k minus n. And so what we have here is a way to generate a, uh, a diagonal of Pascal's triangle, pretty much. Um, and another way to use, so, so this is something we'll be using a bit. And we can notice we can solve some pretty interesting problems like if I were to say if I were to if I were to just write down Pascal's triangle for you right and I explain how it works and then I say if you go down you know this diagonal whatever but you multiply each each term by some power of one half right and then find that infinite sum that would seem very weird but we actually have a natural way to do that you would just plug in x equals one half into the into this function and you would just solve it right there and and we'll be doing that there there are some some problems that aren't necessary combinatorics problems that we can solve with generating functions um, but I'll get to that later uh, so this is pretty much just using the this function and its derivatives but like I said before we can go between dividing 1 minus x and multiplying by this infinite sum. But when I talked about in the last video about sort of polynomial multiplication is that, and especially because all of these polynomial terms have a coefficient of 1, so it doesn't mess up if we have some, some polynomial p of x. And we divide it by 1 minus x. Then, and I'm just going to write this for shorthand of multiplying by this infinite sum, then, then we have p of x plus x times p of x plus x squared times p of x, right? And what this is doing for us is this is what I like to call term shifting, right? And because each time we multiply like x, right, everything gets shifted to the right uh, because every single polynomial term now has a higher degree. And if we look at this for, let's say even just even just it's this own function, right? If we were to square this function we know that we're going to get 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared plus and so on, right? But another, and, and we know that by taking the derivative, we just took the derivative here. But another way that we can do this infinite polynomial multiplication is I like writing it sort of grid style, almost like you would multiply two numbers. And so we have, so, so what I'm saying is, is we have f of x squared. So now by writing it, writing our multiplication here in, in row by row fashion, we see that this term shifting gives us the partial sum of our sequence, right? So if we divide some polynomial, which we say is the generating function of some sequence p, then our new polynomial generates the partial sums of that sequence. Because here, f of x, right, this is representing, this is generating 
the function or the the sequence one 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 right and so the first partial sum is just one and then we have one plus one and then one plus one plus one that's what we're getting here dividing by one minus x which is multiplying by this infinite product or infinite sum sorry is genera it generates the partial sum of whatever sequence we have this this is what term shifting allows us to do and so we won't always do and, and we'll see term shifting elsewhere right because we could just have one plus x plus x squared and that could give us um, and, and, and we could have things that cancel out, right? So when we talk about recurrence relations, um, we can write out generating functions for our sequence and then shift the terms so that when we add together the generating functions, everything can't, or most things cancel out, and we just have something simplified on, on one side. So in this video, you know, just manipulations, right? So we have we have a way to to divide by one minus x, and this gives us partial sums. And this is basically another argument for this, right? Because each diagonal on Pascal's triangle is a partial sum of the other di of the of the previous diagonal. And that's pretty easy to show. That's um, is also commonly known as the hockey stick identity. And if we go down this this one diagonal and we add them together we get this one so this is actually a proof this, this is a way to prove the hockey stick identity using generating functions it, 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 yeah so there's so many things we can do with generating functions this is just the beginning this is just manipulations that we can do with them we haven't solved any problems with this yet so in the next videos we will solve some problems we'll do recurrence relations and and and, and more stuff so I hope you enjoyed this video, and I, I look forward to making more videos for you. Thank you.